So we're here to talk about memory boxes. If you were looking for anything else, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> but we're here to talk about memory boxes. So I thought I would start by just introducing myself because you can't see me, but that's what I look like. My name's Jo, nice to meet you all virtually. And I am the Access and Learning Manager at Guernsey Museums in the Channel Islands. And just to give you a little bit of background to Guernsey Museums, we are owned by the States of Guernsey and we look after four main sites, which are Castle Cornet, Guernsey Museum at Candy, the German Naval Signals HQ and Fort Grey. So we have a very wide variety, we have a wide variety of different sites and different requirements. And um, these range from art galleries to medieval castles to shipwreck museums. And part of what the service that we offer is um, access and learning. And this is where memory boxes come in. So where, what are memory boxes? Well, I'm sure that some of you are familiar with memory boxes already, but um, we're probably all familiar with the feeling of opening a box or a drawer and seeing some objects in there that maybe we haven't seen for a long time and being overwhelmed with um, memories. And that's really the idea behind memory boxes. They are, uh, they are boxes filled with objects designed to, the purpose of the boxes is to encourage memory, generate discussion, and for me, facilitate enjoyment. Um, we have a library of memory boxes now at Guernsey Museum that we've been building up for about 10 years. And these are free for people to borrow and they can be borrowed by anybody, anybody who might benefit from them. So for example, they've been bor borrowed by groups of people um, who just want an icebreaker. They've been borrowed by care homes who want to stimulate memory for some, for some of their um, residents. And they've, they have been borrowed by group, groups like the Alzheimer's Society and that kind of thing. In, individual people borrow them as well. I must say actually at this point that I'm doing this talk because at the moment it's the end of Creativity and Wellbeing Week that Guernsey Museums has, has um, participated in. And I, I feel quite passionate, well I feel very passionately that muse museums have a part to play in supporting our well-being. So I must not go off track. That's my main, <laughs> that's my main aim. So looking back about uh, 10, 11 years ago, we were inspired by a conference. And if anybody from Royal Cornwall, uh, Royal Museums Cornwall is listening, um, they really inspired us uh, because they run a reminiscent service. And we thought, yeah, let's do it. We have about 67,000 objects in in our care at Guernsey Museum. So that's approximately one for every person who lives in Guernsey. Um, now, we didn't want to put anything in the boxes um, that would be irreplaceable, of course. We have a duty of care to the objects. So where did we find all this stuff? Well, some of it existed already in our handling collection. So that's the part of the museum's collection which can be touched and sent out to schools, as you can see, illustrated by the photograph. So we took some from the handling collection that would be suitable for sending out, but we also did an appeal. And this memory box appeal um, was um, in the media, in the press, on the radio, and we were overwhelmed by the kindness of strangers donating things to the appeal. There was a little bit of confusion at the beginning um, whereby I think some people thought that we, the museum, were asking people to give us their family heirlooms and not quite Fabergé eggs, but their, their objects which were worth some, mon some money, really, in money terms, financially um, valuable. And that was really the opposite of what we, what we were looking for. We were looking for small domestic objects which, in a way, are worthless um, and in a way priceless, um, illustrated here by a little packet of tea that we received, um, an empty packet of tea, um, which was stamped with the Sarnia Tea Company. 
um, Haviland Vale, St Martin's, Guernsey. It always gets a lot of discussion, that object. So we were looking for small things that we could include in our memory boxes. I just thought I'd give you an idea now of the variety of different things that we have in the boxes. So some of these might spark memories for you. And as a facilitator, when we're doing the sessions, these are the sorts of things that you really want to hear. Oh, I had one of those. Oh, my brother had one of those. Or I'm still using one of those. Or sometimes uh, that can't be in the museum. I'm not old enough. <laughs> um, Anti-Macassas. There mastermind toys are fantastic in the memory boxes because you can look at them they're tactile and you can play with them so they've got two uses um a darning mushroom of course it's quite funny giving that to the younger people and seeing what they make of it guernsey milk cartons packaging in general actually is always a really big hit some of you might remember the home pride man the rubik's cube I don't know if you can see what they're doing there, but this is to illustrate Cat's Cradle. So that's another really good thing to include. Music is fantastic. We all know that music is really good at stimulating uh, memories. Um, it's always really good to play it on the format that it's actually on as well. So if you have a record player that's um, in a care home or residential home, that's always really good. The NatWest piggy banks. I had one of those. Trolls. We were, as I say, we were overwhelmed by the appeal that we did about 10 years ago. And one of the lovely aspects was that people had kept things like their housekeeping books um, with the prices and the trade, um, the trade names as well, the brand names, which were fantastic. So they provide so much um, stimulation for um, conversation. So you can often tell when there's a birthday happening, for example, because the amount of butter and sugar is sky high. So we started putting our memory boxes together and we wanted them in themes, again, inspired by what we'd heard was going on in Cornwall. So we've got a mixture of domestic objects, home sweet home. Um, His Not Hers is, is sort of geared towards men, really, and there's tools in there, um, bottles of Brill cream and that kind of thing. This is the contents of one of our boxes called High Days and Holidays. And there's quite a lot of reading in here. And I think we've adapted this box since then because we felt that there was too much literature to read. Um, we do try to include a lot of tax, tactile stuff and different, different, um, uh, different, what am I looking for? Different, um, <laughs> my mind has gone blank. Different materials to provide different sort of senses um when you're feel, feeling the objects i don't know if you can see in the background next to our santa there's one of those um paper christmas christmas paper decorations that you pull out in a concertina effect which are very evocative for a lot of people i love a list so here's a list of top five discussion starters bags bags are perfect for memory boxes because they're light and they bring back a lot of memories because most of us have been to a shop, some of us more than others, during our life. Um, whenever there's a shop closing down in town, we always try and get a bag from there, including Woolworths, which people still talk a lot about, as you can imagine. Cameras are great because you can really, it's really like staggering the change in cameras over a living, in living memory. Music formats, as I've said, this would certainly be in, a me in my memory box, a CD Disman. Cigarettes and tobacco are fantastic. And, and sometimes we tie it in to do a little quiz about brand names um, and brand slogans like Snap, Crackle and Pop. I mean, I I'm aware that that's not a cigarette brand uh, um, tagline, but um, it's interesting looking at brands like Craven A and seeing how they marketed themselves for example i think it was for your throat's sake smoke craven a so again it's uh you can sort of have a really interesting discussion about social history and how cigarette marketing for example has changed so much in a few decades 
Number one, childhood clothing. And this object is probably the most talked about, certainly during memory book sessions with women. Um, it's a Liberty bodice and we have not been able to find an original one. Uh, if anybody has one hanging around that they'd like to donate to us, I'd be very interested in hearing from them. So top 10 things that we've learned doing memory boxes for um, 10 years. Number 10 is boxes. Now, if you talk to anybody who works in museum education, we could talk for a long time about boxes. They're important. Um, if you're thinking of setting up memory boxes, it's a really good idea to have clear boxes. And although I'm not employed by the really useful box company, I am interested in a sponsorship deal. That's on the table. Um, number nine is weight. So again, by including books and lots of literature, it really adds up. So just be aware. And also, you're, you know, sometimes the people carrying these boxes are elderly and you need to be aware that um, to keep the boxes light. Expectations. Sometimes when, so, we lend out memory boxes, but we also sometimes lend out a person with that memory box to host or facilitate a session. And sometimes you are expected to entertain the audience. And sometimes we have been to people's bedsides with memory boxes because they might be in bed um, for whatever reason in a care home or sometimes a hospital. And we can do that. If um, if staff time allows, we can do that kind of thing. And we're very, very happy to. Um, it's just worth bearing in mind what people expect of you before you do the session, of course, which is important with all sessions. Hello. The next one is embrace the unknown. So this is about having ambiguous objects in the collection. Um, you might be able to see there on the left the lace bobbins which are, are great because they're really tactile and for some people they can remember their grandmothers using these so jumble sales are definitely your friend if you're thinking of setting up some um, memory boxes number six is stick to the object so i believe that um, we, we we clearly live in a digital world but i think that museums have such a crucial role to play in celebrating the real and the 3D and the physical. Um, so it's tempting to include lots of photographs of, of objects and descriptions of objects, but actually we found that using the real thing which people could hold was far, far more engaging and rewarding for everybody. I believe that Florence Nightingale um, said the same thing. I couldn't find the quote, but I'm sure she said it, that she believed in taking objects to bedsides to improve people's moods. Okay, um, the next one is stories. So objects allow people to tell stories and, and we've been down all sorts of rabbit holes using um, objects in memory sessions. Um, sometimes they've been extremely sad uh, because of course objects can do that they can stimulate sad memories as well as happy ones um, I just thought I'd do a light-hearted one here about woolen swimsuits so this is an advert for male swimming trunks um, that have been to be knitted out of wool um, and it's always really entertaining listening to people's stories about um, wearing woolen swimming costumes down at the bathing pools or on one of Guernsey's beaches um, I remember one lady told told us that they they were so that sodden with water they were just um, saturated with water that the 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 crotch of the swimsuit on this lady was down to her knees and she needed to pick it up and throw it over her shoulder. Um, yeah, lots and lots of stories. Um, Sometimes the boxes are being used with people who are suffering uh, from some memory problems. And I, we, we learned quite early on to avoid the question, what's this? Uh, because it's quite confrontational and we want more than anything else for people to enjoy these sessions. So instead of using that, we tend to say things, and it's difficult, we don't always, it's impossible to ignore it sometimes but we 
we choose to say something like, oh, I've brought this to show you. How does, and you know, how does it feel? Do you like the feel of it? Tell me something that you like about this object. Including purpose. So this, this is um, an image of a threepenny bit actually. And I got this idea from um, a colleague who works in museum education in the UK. And she felt that giving people a job to do during memory box sessions was really rewarding for them. So th these were mainly people who had dementia and she would take a, a big sort of ice cream tub full of old money and give it to somebody to count. Or she would take a flat iron and a pile of, I think she used to take in her own laundry actually, a laundry shirts and set them to do some ironing for her. The next one is the senses. So especially when we, um, when we go out with the boxes, when, the, when somebody from the team goes out with the boxes, we try to make it a very sensual experience. So for example, we might take some cut flowers to smell or some old fashioned boiled sweets, checking beforehand, of course, we should always do that. And um, talk, I mean, one recently, well, actually ages ago we did, was about sweets and we took things like palmer violets, rhubarb and custard, and, um, and it was wonderful, you know, and we could look at some old packaging as well. If you do choose to use coal tar soap in one of your boxes, be aware that your whole museum will stink of coal tar soap for at least six months. <laughs> and my last tip would really be to start small, try it out and have fun. Because that's what we're here for. Um, I just thought I'd share with you a little project that we did a few years ago and this was um, so one of our museums is situated in a beautiful garden candy gardens and we got hold of a lot of bunting and we decided to attach people's memories onto this bunting for a special event that was happening in the gardens so we worked with um, different groups of people um, dementia charities included to gather people's memories of the gardens because they were previously um, in the gardens years ago there was an auditorium there and some very very big names of their day performed there for example Shirley Bassey, Arthur Askey, Morecambe and Wise so it's a big part of social history in Guernsey and um, we had a lot of images to have a look at. We looked at some objects as well, like hair curlers, brill cream again, the kind of thing that you would be using for a, going to a night out to watch um, a band or some entertainment at Candy. And we got people's memories going. And um, here's one that I took a photograph of the time. It says, I met my first boyfriend at Candy. He was in the Navy. We were watching a band. I don't know if it was the Robert Brothers, but we were watching everybody jiggle around. He wasn't a dancer. This was also an opportunity for us to do some oral history actually and collect some of these memories. So it was the objects that were stimulating, that were facilitating this exercise. There's Shirley Bassey as well. And I just thought to finish, I would share with you a sign that's in our colleague Lisa's office. Lisa is the registrar. And it says, objects matter in life. You touch them and they touch you back. I thought that was a lovely moment to finish on. So as we say in Guernsey, Alla Pashoin. And thank you very much for listening.